Hello everybody, John here, and today on To The Garage, we're gonna look at why is the trim for the headrail on my XK8 convertible so misaligned? Okay, so what are we looking at? This is the headliner, if you like, that is at the top of the windscreen on an XK8 convertible. On a mine, I've always had, this isn't new, I've always had this distortion. It's very firm. It's not a case of it just not pushed home or anything like that. It's very distorted. Now this could be out of shape for all sorts of reasons to do with weather. Somebody's tried to rip it off previously. It could be where it's not clipped into place properly. It could be something's trapped, but doesn't allow it to go fully home. So we're gonna find out what's going on there. And to do that, we're gonna to have to gently remove this piece of rubber trim. It's very complex, it's old and it's expensive. So do not damage this. We're gonna to have to remove the sun visors, which are very easy. Two screws under that cover and a screw under this cover. We're going to have to remove the interior light binnacle. And potentially we'll be removing this finisher trim just to see what else is going on under there. Okay, so we're just going to get the sun visors out first. If you've never, never done this before, then check out my video on repairing the flap. Um, but covers up the vanity mirror, which will give you the detail on this so that you don't damage anything. The clip-in bracket on the opposite side of the sun visor has the electrical connections going to it. And there's a tiny little hinged hatch. And you need a very narrow screwdriver or a robust knife to just get in there and flip this open. And there's our other screw. The interior light binnacle, we got details in a video called how to access and change your courtesy light lamps, but the essentials is you've got to grab it from the, the glass side and pull down. There we go. Just release the cable by squeezing a little white grip. There we go. Ooh. Just on the unseen side, there's a squeezable uh, tang on that. So with both sides unscrewed, you need to pull your A-pillar trim, so this piece, by putting your hand close to the top, close to the glass, getting your fingers just on the edge and just give it a tug and it comes back diagonally 45 degrees towards the center of the cockpit. Don't need to pull it very far. Just want to get the clips that go through this trim here to pop out. Being extra careful on mine because it's got a microphone attached to the uh, head rail trim for a very old system that no longer functions, but I want to keep it. Just for historical interest. 
Right, let's just on Velcro that microphone. There we go. And there we go, we're out. And with that down, the wiring that goes to your sun visor, the vanity mirror lights, goes onto these yellow connectors, which you can easily unplug like so. Unfortunately, one of mine's been cable tied up and it shouldn't be. So I'll just go snipper to snip that. There we go, and we're off. Just pop that up. I'll go to the other side. And we're out. And I'll just show you when I was pulling the A trim, A pillar trim forward, I was trying to get this orange spike to come out of its hole because that goes through their head trim. Well, here is our header trim off the car on the bench. And very interesting to look at for me, but what I'm seeing here is nothing missing, nothing broken. So unless the back edge of the um, interior light cluster was not pushing up hard enough. I can't see anything that would mean it was out of position other than it being distorted by time and heat. But it feels quite solid. Or, as is the case with quite a few bits and pieces on my car, just a little early in production. So you've got this pronounced curve <coughs> here on this edge. If we go over to the car, hopefully what you should see is that, I don't know if you can see easily, probably there, the black metal work is straight in that area. The top rail does have a slight curve out in the middle, but my trim has a far more pronounced curve so that's maybe something I'm going to have to live with unless I'm prepared to distort this or somehow pin it back let's have a little look round it's compressed fiberboard I suppose hardboard would be the closest thing <clears throat> to this sort of material it's got a black cloth liner that's been vacuum sealed onto it just to give it a finish. The exterior is the normal, what I call brushed nylon, but I've been corrected. I think Gary Van Mortals told me it's um, polyester. But in terms of a finish, we would call this brushed nylon. And it's foam backed and here where it's pretty unaffected because it hasn't been glued down. You can see the original thickness. I'm going to take the opportunity to cut this off here. So I've got a sample because I would like to retrim this and it matches the A pillar covers as well, which have got a few wrinkles in. So this is a really good place for me to take a sample from. There we go. Let's have a look at the stickers. That's a date, 21st of the 8th, 1996. 
again marking this out as a very very early car Lear Corporation same people who make the seats very high quality interior manufacturers Jaguar X100 care point label it's important for any concerns are identified prior to the next operation if the part is not okay or label is not signed stop work on this item and inform team leader immediately and we've got the various steps for the process I imagine this to be a generic so you wouldn't expect this to go through every step molding bracketing vacuum covering which this has water jetting that's cutting out the various holes and apertures assembly a assembly b c d e and then final inspection <clears throat> so this has been molded vac covered water jetted and inspected and it seems that it all happened between the 18th of the 8th and the 21st of the 8th 1996 this is a new label on me let's see if I can find out what that means yeah no obvious damage on it turn it over and you can see it doesn't appear that it's been stretched or abused in any way it's certainly been off after the car was made because on my car there is this additional microphone and there is that disc up there which is an antenna and the associated wiring for a very early form of sat nav although most people wouldn't recognize it as a sat nav anymore you had to call a center tell them where you wanted to go they would send the directions to the car and then the car would speak the directions as you drove and um yeah next time you want to go somewhere you call them up again well, i got this off i've got a tiny little top don um vacuum which I can use to clean up the headline a little bit without dragging it around too much and take all the rubbish out from the other side. Let's see if I can use a smooth nozzle so I don't catch it. Now this is very raggedly finished round here, so I'm just going to recut that and trim that to my preference. For interest I am going to remove this panel and the first trick is to get this little press pin out and that's far easier and safer from the inside so from the inside you can see the tip of this which I can just squeeze and push through there it is a little fir tree clip with a little pin out the end very carefully push don't tear this back you're looking for a little screw head which is so we can get the screwdriver on it and then show you there we go it's there, so very close to where the um, 
smooth top curls down on this trim piece. Get a little screw. And then, there's the end. There's a Torx T25 just here. And then, following over from the end, there is a Torx T25 just here, which also holds that trim down. Equivalent tiny screw. What we got on the other side needs to come out on this side. What's immediately interesting is that this trim is metal. And much as I know about these cars, I was fully anticipating this to be a plastic trim piece. But it is Dorchester grey painted steel. And there we go. Off comes the top trim piece. Just hooked this trim back into position without the top trim panel on. I put it behind the A pillar trims, put it in the right place. And it's not sitting how I would anticipate. I think it needs to be a lot more like that. That looks right. Now the um, interior light unit will pull it up a little. So what I'm gonna do is a refit that and if that still doesn't give me that, I'm going to do some sort of mod here with a captive riv nut and a clip or something like that, just to pull it up. I think maybe it has just distorted over the years. Okay, so refitting everything has drastically improved things, but this still needs to go from there to there and without making big holes in the underside and drilling stuff through um, it looks quite tricky so what I'm going to go for is this is a Volkswagen T2 door panel clip just a hook and a big barb and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook it onto here like so. Oops. Put it in the middle. That. And there may be a little bit exposed, but I can touch that up with a bit of grey paint. This is going to go into a hole in this bracket and that will support it and hopefully keep the whole thing looking neat. So all I need to do is mark where that touches, then I'll go up by about three mil, then I'll drill a hole and bang, in she goes. I'll come back to you in a minute. Well, there we are. There's my hole added. See the mark I've made where the clip's got to go. So here we go. So it's got a big barb on the back. It's gonna go on there. Just check it lines up. Yep. Squeeze it well down. And then, just in case of positioning it and giving it a push. How's that? Beautiful. 
beautiful tiny little clip say a little bit grey paint and nobody will notice it if they weren't pointed at it when I pulled this down screwed it all back into place with little screws at the end that's gonna be great hey job done it's that time of year so we have to put away our 2022 calendar oh, there's me joe and molly hey and put up our brand new year's calendar congratulations again to utma kittrick the winner of our photo competition in 2022 and we'll be seeing that car again in 2023 and for now, we say hello to Oliver Bircher in his frost blue XKR. It's a 4.2S called Agatha. It's in southwest England. I'm going to guess Agatha after Agatha Christie. Uh, she's from the south southwest of the UK. So, yeah, that's my outside guess. So, great photo, beautiful background. Well, I hope you'll agree with me that that looks rather nice. Very, very neat. From above, we've got the profile correct. And from straight on, the only clue is that rather shiny edge of the clip, which again, I say, I'll just dab in with a bit of matte gray paint and it really won't be worth, worthy of comment then. So, quite chuffed. Nice, easy fix. If you've enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing to the channel.